Welcome to the Nature Just Got Real Sensational Summer Minicast Series for Kids. Let's get started. Hello, Planeteers. Welcome to the new Summer Minicast Series, Episode 7. I'm your host, KB Carr, and if you're watching this on video, you get to see a cartoon version of me since we're keeping it summer casual. This episode is part of the Sensational Summer Series minicasts, and these are short but awesome shows because they give you a project to do, so don't forget to download the activity that goes with this episode. There's a new episode released every Monday through the end of August, so watch for those. Tita will be hosting the next episode, so be sure to watch for that. Today we are talking about ocean depths and what they are, what they're called, and what lives there. Let's get right into today's mini-cast. The ocean is divided into layers according to depth, and those layers have names that correspond with how deep that layer goes. There are five ocean layers, and they have two names each, the scientific name and the common name. We're going to stick with the common name for pronunciation purposes, but I'll put the scientific names in the project download in case you want to impress the adults. Here they are in order. The Sunlight Zone. The Twilight Zone, no, nothing to do with the TV show. The Midnight Zone, The Abyss, also nothing to do with the movie, and The Trenches. So, Sunlight, Twilight, Midnight, The Abyss, and The Trenches. Got it? Now, the Sunlight Zone is exactly how it sounds. It gets its name because this is where most of the visual light is. This zone begins at the surface and ends about 660 feet down. And with all that light comes the most warmth, which means that a huge variety of marine life make the sunlight zone their home. The marine life that live in the sunlight zone have no shortage of small fish or phytoplankton to feed off, since they call this zone home too. Most of the most common marine species here are sharks, stingrays, tuna, jellyfish, dolphins, some whales, and even sea turtles. Now, once you get past the 660-foot mark, you'll enter the Twilight Zone, which extends down to 3,280 feet. And while there can be some faint light towards the start, photosynthesis can no longer occur, so no plants are able to survive at this zone. As the water pressure increases and the temperature decreases, The marine life that thrive in the twilight zone have to be able to withstand its tough conditions. These animals may have darker bodies to better camouflage themselves in the dark surroundings. Octopus, squid, and sea stars make this zone their home, and some whales even visit the twilight zone to feed. You'll even begin to notice bioluminescent fish, which create their own light in these conditions. And yes, I am talking about the anglerfish, old flashlight head himself. We now know why he needs one. From 3,280 feet to about 13,135 feet is the midnight zone, which doesn't have any sunlight, hence the name. Any light that is produced here comes from bioluminescent fish like the deep sea angler fish. Water pressure is even greater in this zone, so depending on where you're located, it can be just as high as two tons per square inch. Just like in the twilight zone, photosynthesis does not occur here, which means you won't see any plants living down here. Along with sperm whales that venture down here to feed, The Midnight Zone is home to certain kinds of algae, mussels, vampire squid, there's one for you, and tripod fish. Now from 13,135 feet to 19,700 feet, the abyss contains zero sunlight and crushing levels of water pressure. The abyss alone covers around 83% of the total area of ocean. And although the abyss is so vast, very few animals can handle the extreme conditions. Those that can withstand the pressure are usually invertebrates, like tiny squid or basket stars, which is a species of sea star. And food is scarce here, and many of these animals end up eating whatever they can get their fins on. Now, the trenches 
covers the ocean from around 20,000 feet to the very bottom, which can be close to 36,000 feet. Not only is the temperature this deep freezing or below uh, in the trenches, but the water pressure is extreme at eight tons per square inch in the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest ocean trench on earth. These trenches are steep depressions in the deepest parts of the ocean, which is what this zone is named for. While it has pretty hostile living conditions, a small percentage of marine life does make their home here. This exclusive club of deep, deep sea dwellers includes grenadiers, pearlfish, cutthroat eels, and one of my favorite animals, the giant isopod. Did you know the giant isopod is related to the roly-poly? But I digress. With five different zones that make up over 35,000 feet, the ocean is crazy immense. In fact, less than 10% of the global ocean has been mapped. 10%. Think about that. Who knows what we have yet to find? So, this week's mission is to make the ocean layers in a jar. Yes, you can do it, and I'll show you how. The instructions are in the project PDF that you can download. The link for that will be in the show notes. That's it for this episode. Tune in next week and when Tito talks about snails and slugs and gives you a cool project you can do at home. Go out and have an ocean exploring adventure in your neighborhood. That wraps up this mini cast for today. Thank you to our sponsor, Weird and Wacky Planet. Don't forget to download your play sheets and activities for this episode. See you next Monday for the next installment in the Sensational Summer Series minicast. Thank you for listening.